August 22nd, 2012 was a terrible day for gaming. That was the day that Sony decided to shut down Studio Liverpool, the company formerly known as Cygnosis that had spent most of the 2000s fine-tuning the Wipeout franchise. I took this news especially hard, and I worried that we had seen the last of one of my favorite racing games. While I still haven't fully recovered, I'm happy to report that Anti-Graviator does an excellent job of filling that void left in my heart. It's a fast-paced game that manages to combine the best elements from Wipeout and Split Second to create one of the most exciting racers of the year. Created by a first-time developer known as Cybernetic Walrus, Anti-Graviator makes a great first impression. The year is 2210, and racing has evolved beyond watching people drive around in a giant oval. The new fans are expecting something bigger, something faster, something not bound by gravity. The result is a racing game where we pilot a hovercraft through dozens of insane tracks that have us driving up buildings in a loop and even upside down. Now there are a couple of things that this game absolutely nails. One of them is the sense of speed, which is almost overpowering at first. This game is quick and the action is just as intense. It's the kind of racing game where the computer controlled opponents are aggressive and relentless, constantly fighting to get ahead of you. They're good about using the boost pads and finding a way around you, which forces players to not only master the game's handling, but also memorize the loopy stages. One of the reasons you'll want to pay attention is because there are a number of traps you can trigger all around the course. For example, you'll be able to drop a bunch of boxes and rocks on the track, or engulf half of the road in flames. These antics remind me a lot of the game Split Second, which also used destruction as a weapon. I like that there are a good variety of these traps depending on the stages, and there are usually a few different types attached to each course. I prefer being able to pick up weapons like in Wipeout, but this is a fun take on the formula. On top of the sense of speed and the environmental obstacles, Anti-Graviator also has great locations. The stages in this game are incredible, rivaling what we've seen in other futuristic racers. They're not only bursting with detail and personality, but are also diverse in more than one way. The developers do a great job of letting us see the different parts of the world in 2210, complete with stages set in the city, through the mountains, past the bay, and of course, in space. There are more than 30 tracks to race, though that number is inflated a bit by a few reverse courses. Either way, there's more than enough content here to warrant the asking price. The various game modes aren't nearly as interesting, but they get the job done. There's a straightforward campaign that has you racing in a bunch of tournaments in order to earn money and unlock new stages. Some of these races will include slight variations on the theme, including knockout, countdown, and death race events. Aside from the campaign, you can also try your luck at the quick play mode and an online multiplayer mode. Unfortunately, that's about it. For what it's worth, my issue with the game has little to do with the simplistic campaign or the lack of interesting modes. My biggest complaint is that Anti-Graviator is a little too easy. I struggled with the first few stages, but once I got used to controlling the hovercraft, I had no problems winning almost every tournament on the first try. It never felt like the tournaments were getting harder or faster, but rather that they were simply giving us different tracks to race. I also don't like that you have to pay money to enter the tournaments, though that's a minor nitpick. Now because this game looks and feels so much like Wipeout, I can't help but compare it to Sony's long-running franchise. The truth is, this game gets a lot right. There are a few things that are unfortunately missing. One of those is the ability to use the two trigger buttons as left and right air brakes. Anti-Graviator does have something similar, but it's not as good. By flicking the right analog stick, we can barrel roll to either side at any time. This is especially good when you get caught up on the walls, but it can also be used to swat other racers out of the way. That said, it's not a good alternative to the air brakes. While Anti-Graviator is certainly derivative of other futuristic racing games, it still manages to stand out from the pack. Part of the reason for this is because it nails the fundamentals, including tight controls, a great sense of speed, and some of the best stages you'll find in a racing game this year. I'm a little disappointed in the difficulty in the simplistic single-player campaign, but if this is the developer's first stab at making a racing game, then I can't wait to see what Cybernetic Walrus comes up with next. Hey, thanks for watching our review. So here's the question I have for you. 
what's your favorite futuristic racing game? I'm already on the record saying that I love the Wipeout series, but I also dig that first F-Zero game. Let me hear your picks in the comments below. In other news, I'm currently hard at work on a review for Agony. I hate running backwards, coffee crisis, and more. So much more. I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.